full sketch. Um, this will kind of show you how to make different uh, different lines and to add imagery with the Google Maps overlay or underlay, kind of how I, I work things. So first things first, I'm going to sketch out my building. This building is a curling club. So 4.1 meters, 0.9 meters. So I'm just going to draw out the shape here. So this is going to have, now one thing that you can do, you see when you come off the, uh, off the page here, is uh, this little guy right here, this is like a zoom all type, type uh, button. So if you click that, you can kind of get your map recentered. Again, just to click back on, you can snap, it'll snap right to the end. Everything's parallel lines, so it's pretty easy. So I'm just drawing in the rest of these lines here. And to flip back and forth, so this is my select that was online. Press the space bar, you get to this tool right here, which is your select tool. You can just select that and hit delete. And you'll know that you've closed off your shape, that everything's connecting when you have the, the blue in here. Um, basically, to find out the area of this, you can just select that and uh, you can get your area up here. Um, so next what I'm going to do is I am going to add some imagery to this. That way you'll be able to orient it in the north direction and if you have to add the roads or any surrounding exposing buildings, it kind of makes it easier than trying to see where they are. So I'm going to come over here to the file, file, geolocation, add location. Okay, so just click uh, close here, and you're going to want to enter in your address of the risk. So here's the risk right here that I drew. There's an exposure, exposure, there's one at the back as well. Um, so basically you want to make sure that you zoom this to the correct size so that you can get it to come onto your thing. You can always zoom in and out when you're on your worksheet too. And then up here to the top right of the screen here, it says select region. So you can see you can move these pins if you want more or less in there. <clears throat> okay. That rear exposure. We got the front, the right, the left, and the rear exposure in here. And you just want to click up again on the right here, grab. There we go, good. Sometimes that doesn't work with the recording. Okay, good. So now we have our imagery here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this out of the way. So drag it. Um, M is for move, and you click down to click a point where you move it with, and just move it off of our thing here and go back to select and I'm going to make a copy. So uh, control C and control V, so you can make a copy. I'm just gonna put it over here and then what I'll do is I'll move this on and then I make a, always make a copy that way if you mess it up somehow in here then you still have this so you don't have to go back and redraw it. You can always delete this one or delete the other one if, if things don't work. So I am going to pick uh, let's see, I'm going to move it. If you want to click on your toolbar here, this is the move right here, or the shortcut is M. And I am going to pick this point to lay it on, so which is actually this point. I'm going to put it on the roof right now. You can see with Google Earth, it's kind of hard sometimes to draw because you have the roof overhangs and you have some distortion from the, the angle of view when it was taking the satellite picture. So either you can put it right down here or you can put it up here just to make sure that I just overlay this just to make sure that my shape is right and not off. 
I would trust your measurements rather than anything on Google Earth, but if the two don't match, then you better go back and kind of look at your measurements and whatnot. So once I have this corner set, then I need to use the rotate tool, which is this right here. Um, the keyboard shortcut for this, I believe, is Q, which makes sense. So this is where you're going to rotate it on this point, and you're just going to want to pick something that's uh, parallel down the line. And can, you can see the whole thing rotates. So just get it on there. Get it on there like that. Okay. Now spacebar to go back to your select tool. So you can see we have it overlaid on here. It's not going to match per perfectly again because of the uh, field of view. There'll be roof overhangs and whatnot. So you just want to make sure that uh, you trust your measurements more than I think Google Earth. And uh, yeah, so basically what I will do now is I keep this just in case I am working on this and I mess it up pretty bad. I just go over here and select it. If you do a right click, you can hide it and then it just goes away. That way if you ever need to get it back, you can come up here to edit, unhide all, and it'll just come back. So it's pretty easy to leave there just in case you need it. Okay, so now what you can do is draw things on like your road. So you have your exposure here. Here's your road. Okay. Other side of the road. Oops. The two, um, to delete a line, so you can see I kind of made a mistake there and, and deleted a line. You uh, press your space bar, you'll get back to your select tool. You can just click on the line. You can see that it turns blue and then just hit your delete key. So back to the line again, L button, and the keyboard shortcut there. Okay, and then if you wanna draw in your exposures, you can always draw them on here like this. Another exposure here. Exposures, they're not, they're interested in the distance, not necessarily the shape or any of that kind of stuff. So you can just kind of draw them back here. And the front exposure. So I usually just tilt it in the direction of the perpendicular and depending whether I'm on feet or meters, I'm on meters, so I'm using five meters. If I'm on uh, feet, I'd use maybe like 20 or 30 feet depending on the scale of the, uh, of the photograph there, but that's the closest for an exposure. So now I have my road on here. I might draw in the parking, parking lot. It goes back here. parking lot. Um, I think that's pretty much it for exposure. So yeah, again, I go back to your select key and you can select this. You can see it's a red border here. That means that the image is locked. If you do a right click on that, you can unlock it and you can see it turns to a blue and then do a right click again, you can hide it. And so you're left with just your lines there. So again, to get this back to your to the best perspective, you want to click this Zoom All button here. So it kind of brings it back. And that's kind of how I use. You have to do the labeling last because it doesn't necessarily scale with it, whereas the dimensions and all the other stuff will scale with it. And so it's important to keep this view as a Zoom All. And that way, when you go to export as a 2D JPEG, then uh, it'll come out looking good. Otherwise, it'll kind of look a bit wonky. I think it just takes everything on your screen. So you can see we have these things open, the exposures. Uh, basically to close these off, we're gonna select this arc key right here. And it's a pretty simple, just click on the end, click halfway through, make it a little arc. So you can kind of see it's like it's cut out halfway. It's kind of, So that way you're not drawing the whole exposure. You're only drawing. Oh. 
uh, in there you can see I just made a mistake so let's say you clicked on one but you don't you're like oh I clicked on the wrong button just hit the escape key and that'll deselect and you can go back and reselect again okay one more Okay, so those are your exposures.